boy, here we go. It doesn't matter if you've even played or enjoyed a Tony Hawk game before, you know what we're in for today. So let's not piss about and jump straight in. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, released late into 2015, it's been three years since we've heard from the Birdman, and only a few months prior to its launch, the trailers and promotional content started appearing quite regularly from E3 until the start of October. I'd watch each trailer as it dropped, and all I could see was the quality of the gameplay drop right off a fucking cliff. These are the gaming stories that break my heart, but at the same time, never get old retelling. Like all amazing games before it, Thups 5 was rushed through development for the sole reason to make one last cash in on the established name before Tony Hawk's contract with Activision expired. The game launched with barely any content on the disc as a result of rushed manufacturing to meet this legal deadline and require a whopping 8 gigabyte day one patch to access the full game. That is just insane. All of that, and yet the opening logos are still glitched to fuckery. What a great introduction. At least the hyped up skateboard porn is back, and despite everything we've learned so far about this game, I'm still mega excited to play it because of this damn montage. These things work, where have they been all week? We've got a decent list of pros, most of them new blood. What's really strange, however, is that to create our own skater, we still need to select a pro, go to customize, and now open custom mode. Oh no! So, this is Create a Skater. Our goal was to make a pro skater game for 2015. What is going on here? I only get to choose between pre-made items, heads, torsos, and decks. This sucks deck. Level 1, the barracks. I mean, what can I even say? Right out of the gate, this is just dull. Everything is grey, the level has no flow, and it's just so empty. The big marketing thing for this game was 20 player online sessions playing through the goals online, but since they shut the fucking servers down, there isn't much of that going on these days. Hell, you can't even purchase a digital version of the game anymore. I know I'm normally late to the party, but this is just depressing. The first thing of note is the controls. They're very similar to Pro Skater HD, with a lack of any momentum and magnetizing into rails. But everything feels a lot lighter, and despite that, trying to get somewhere specific is incredibly awkward and stiff. Apparently, Robomodo worked alongside some of the Neversoft team of the original games to get the controls feeling authentic. But did they work with a programmer or the fucking janitor? It feels nothing like it. And why did they need to work with anyone in the first place? Surely all these people who claim to love the series back in the day know what the old games feel like. But given the time constraints, I can't fully lay the blame on them. The first glaring problem for me, right out of the gate, has to be the special moves. They're non-existent. We don't have to complete a specific button input to land them anymore. All you do is fill up the bar, trigger special mode, and now all the wild tricks are done automatically, replacing the normal ones. That might have been acceptable in Ride and Shred, where we don't have the luxury of a traditional controller, but even those games had separate inputs for each trick, so what is this fucking garbage? It really pisses me off. But what breaks this is not being able to trigger special moves without ending your combo. That's the entire reward of getting good at these games. Building your special meter multiple times in one combo, but Robomodo want you to start the combo with a barrage of not so special tricks. So many times I'll get a special trick that I can't possibly land in the given situation. So not only is it blatantly inauthentic and lazy, but it's a handicap for the player constantly looming over you. 
And again, like Pro Skater HD, we've got no trick chaining and no advanced grinds or manuals. I'm just stunned by that decision. Surely all the nostalgic fans they're marketing this game to would remember just how good the series got before its decline, so not including any of what they remember was always going to end badly. So, what are we doing? When you load up a level, we've got some classic goals to complete, such as collecting skate and combo letters, finding the secret tape and DVD, and collecting some other items, like pizza boxes or smashing swag crates. You can also go up to these markers to trigger different missions, but since this game now exists as an ancient relic of a past civilization, objectives can also be accessed via a quick launch menu, which is handy, making the markers obsolete elite in the process. But for a game that was supposed to be all about an online community, it makes sense I suppose. There are seven levels in the base game, which is actually less than the original Pro Skater, Pro Skater 2, Pro Skater 3, and Pro Skater 4, and so on through the entire series. But wouldn't you believe it, this game borrows some of those old levels to help burn your childhood even more. Once again, School 2 gets a remake called School 3. That's a fucking lie. It should be School 1.5 because half the fucking map is missing. And the other, known as The Bunker, borrows key elements from the warehouse level seen across the series. It's missing the big half pipe in the middle, but does have a helicopter to bounce off because realism, and an entirely new hallway section towards the back. And let me tell you, these are easily the best levels in the game because they're ripped directly from classic levels. That's the only reason. The new levels do get better as you get through the game, but they're all still so generic and lifeless. The Mega Park is mega pathetic, Rooftops is absolutely massive but split up between these giant falls so the navigation sucks, and Bonfire Beach is massive with only a few interesting obstacles in the middle and so much space that serves no purpose. You can even see the classic Venice Beach level in the background, so at least it wasn't consumed by toxic smog. It's a nice attention to detail, but Christ, for a level I'm not even that big a fan of, it's a constant reminder that I could be playing a real pro skater game. The big things that kill this game for me above all else is the lack of any depth to the levels. They just have no flow and feel like a bunch of random objects slapped together at pure random. And the other thing being that the objectives are so mundane and boring. Of course, we've got the basic things like high scores, collecting objects scattered around the map, and big head mode making a return, but that's really it. There isn't a story mode, and the levels don't even have any unique goals designed for them. Even before the series developed a story mode, each location had its own identity, with various set pieces and missions that felt individual and home in their respective levels. But there is none of that here! Every level has you collecting a bunch of objects, all interchangeable placeholders across each map. Every level has a ring challenge, with the challenge aspect always coming from the terrible level design and not the gameplay. And every level has multiple high score and high combo objectives, and that pretty much covers it. Occasionally we get this out of the pool mission where the goal is to remove a bunch of items as quickly as possible, but it was fucking boring the first time and it never changes. Any changes to missions in this game are either about how much of something you need to collect and how quickly it's done, or the changes are purely cosmetic, just swapping out icons for other icons. The most original mission here is in School 1.5. We have to go from one end of the map to the other and kick all the balls along the way. That's literally it! You don't even need to score a goal, just touch this item and run back. 
If this is the best example of an original objective in this game, then by fuck, they've failed. And just to really fucking irk me, every time I want to change anything in this game, I have to exit to the main menu. Sometimes, people get mad at me for critiquing and comparing games from 20 years ago to what we have available to us today, claiming it's unfair. Well, I hope you won't get too offended if I compare a modern video game to the standards of a game from 2001. How fucking hard was it to let me upgrade my stats and change to a new level without having to exit out to the fucking title screen every time? Pro Skater 3 was able to manage that simple request, and it still sits as one of the highest rated and best selling video games of all time. And what have you got to show for yourself? Broken physics and glitching textures. It's like you farted and accidentally sharted, you fucking sick mess of a game. Let's talk glitches. Honestly, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I think a lot of people might experience one glitch and then try to break games as a result. But having said that, I've still had my fair share. Of course, the game doesn't even want to boot up or let me use a custom character, but even from the first level, things were broken. Big head mode was activated despite the objective being to collect ice creams which was interesting, followed up immediately by that big head cascading through the bloody floor. And of course, the show stealer, just collapsing and then respawning underneath the fucking map. I guess, where else could I possibly be? It's not skater heaven, I've been there, so it must be skater hell. I can still do tricks, but nothing can get me back. I even waited for time to run out, and that still didn't reset me. So I had to exit and restart the level. That was the worst of it. Other times, Tony might get his head stuck in something or go back to his home planet. Nothing too wild. I've seen plenty of extreme examples online, but having not experienced much of that firsthand, I can't really comment. What shits me though is that everywhere I go, constantly, textures pop in and out on various objects. Like the boost ramps in the mega park. They're supposed to have arrows, but they never seem to be there. And just so many other instances of details flickering. Really demonstrates this game was rushed, and I think it should say that on the walls, and it could flicker while you skate by, yeah, they should totally do that for Pro Skater 6. So, if you can sit through all of that, the glitches, frame stuttering, weird feel, and overly repetitive mediocre missions, you can unlock the Asteroid Belt, where you get to do all of that again. Every level in the game has some dumb, forgettable power-up, like Bonfire Beach, for example, lets you set objects on fire, which serves no purpose. The Mega Park has this giant mode that is literally only used for accessing the hidden area. And honestly, I don't even know what some of these others do. They don't seem to do anything all that special, so why are they here? But the reason I mention this now is because the Asteroid Belt's power-up grants you moon gravity. Try skating a proper session of Tony Hawk with moon gravity. I only ever used that shit in the previous games to pass difficult air missions or air out of existence to explore the nether. This is the most awkward thing and makes trying to hit the sparse selection of lines so much more difficult. But you need this power up to access certain areas of the map. It's so frustrating. And I already said it, there is nothing in this level that we haven't seen before. And I did my best to complete this mission map, as much as possible given the clunk on display here, expecting to see some kind of congratulatory speech or hype video. But it never happened, so it's time to give up. All we've got left to do now is create a park. Honestly, this mode isn't terrible. 
We pick a preset theme and size, then fill it with various items from the other levels. It's a lot better than I was expecting, but why would I want to spend the time trying to build something half decent when I know the second I get in there, the gameplay still sucks and actually runs worse than the rest of the game? Look at how much trouble the game is having trying to render a few ramps and rails. What a complete failure. And yet, despite all the servers being down, I can still download other people's created maps. For whatever reason, they're all ranked 100% with thumbs down. Wow. I don't know why, because the few I tried actually aren't the worst thing ever and have a bit of creativity going on. Firstly, good job guys, I'm proud to be your first thumbs up. Secondly, man I feel sorry for you sad fools for actually making the effort with... this. I can't help but feel like all this criticism is a little unfair as... I've got something to own up to. Because I like to be thorough, I wanted to experience this game as authentically as possible to its initial release, so I never downloaded the latest game patch before starting my playthrough. So I think, for the sake of fairness and completion, let's dive back in to check out three new levels to see if this game finished up in a cleaner state than it started. Now whenever you start the game, there is a warning about reverting back to the previous version, wiping your data. Believe me, it's not lying. All my progress is now lost. Uh, oh no, that's such a shame. Whatever will I do when I want to play Pro Skater 5? The first level of three is Mountain, another downhill style level, but honestly, I like this map. This feels like a pro skater level, looks nice enough in my opinion and has a great flow for continuous combos top to bottom. The first thing I'm noticing with the new updates is a few UI changes, important information appearing nicer on screen, but there is also a lot of loading. Say for example you start a mission, cool, fun, you do that, and then the game cuts away, loads, and puts you back at the start of the map every single time. I'm assuming this is to prevent spawning from the literal last position you were in, which caused a heap of issues for myself and a lot of other people. But for an extensive downhill level, this doesn't work. You can't simply return to the section you just played in, you have to make your way back down the mountain. It even resets the music as well, so it actually loses what little jump in, jump out gameplay it had before. And I should quickly say, the soundtrack overall was pretty standard stuff. Better than some of the games we've already looked at this week, but still incomparable to the classics. The second new level we've got to try is Wild West, and oh boy, get a load of that introduction. Really sets the tone that this patch hasn't done dick all, and Jesus, it gets worse. Red Dead Redemption 2, eat your heart out. And finally, we've got Underground, which is yet another reminder that I could be playing something much better. This level starts the same as Maul from the original Pro Skater, and is just another downhill stage through the Metro system. This is the final image of Pro Skater 5, so it better be good. It's dark depressing, and at this point, I'm so fucking sick of playing this game that I'm just gonna call it a day now. I don't care about 100%ing this game, I don't care if I missed out on some cool creator skater options like Ratchet's Head, and I don't care about getting to skateboard as the Ninja Turtles with their glitchy as fuck textures. I don't care. This Tony Hawk experience has drained my soul. They didn't even try to fix this failed abortion post-release. And to be perfectly clear, I actually prefer the game before this last update. Aside from missing the extra levels, I wasn't forced through loading screens and constant setup like in Ride. 
I could just jump into a level and do missions. And given the fact the update doesn't address any of the other issues, the constant play and free-flowing feel the game had before was enough for me to want it back. But you can't go back without losing all your progress, so it locks you in. What can I even say? Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 gets 3 out of 10. This still is not the worst game of the series. I honestly, in good conscience, couldn't make that claim having played what I've played. I found Shred much more unbearably lame and underwhelming with zero talking points. But this is still a total bomb and I'm in no way defending this shit. While I did enjoy a few different aspects like the soundtrack, some areas of certain levels, and yes, I did enjoy seeing this thing break, we're not praising that. Everything about this feels like a product forced out the rear of a soulless corporation going in for your wallet one last time. Seeing this broken game breaks my heart, having to witness my old flame die out so gracelessly. Well, I'm sure you didn't enjoy it either, but I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe and share. I'm Square Eyed Jack and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching. It's time to go home. Oh! <laughs>